Shalom, he bros and she brews. Welcome to the channel. This is Oil Field Disciple. Thank you for stopping by and checking out the channel. If you're new here, I would like in, and you like the, the content that I put out here, um, go click the subscribe button and subscribe to the channel for me, please. Um, and so with that, um, and those who follow me diligently, uh, Shalom, y'all have a blessed day. Um, here it's early morning. I'm going to show you something. Right now, it's a balmy 21 degrees, if you can see. 21 degrees. Nice and nice and warm here. And the wind's kicking on here about oh, 10, 15 mile an hour. So it's, it's a real fun day out here in the oil field. I just wanted to lay down something that the Holy Spirit's put on my my, my spirit, the Ruach. Uh, if we go read in Mark chapter 16, it's the last chapter in the book of Mark, Marcos, um, there was a couple interesting things that I read this morning. Now, Mark 16 is Mary Magdala and other women go to the tomb to roll, to, um, to anoint the body of Yeshua with oil and spices And as they're going, they're thinking, how are we going to get that big old stone out the way? Because remember, whenever they, they buried Yeshua, they rolled that big stone in front of the door. And, they, and, and it was sealed with the seal of Pilate. And so they're thinking, how are we going to get this, this big old stone rolled away? And as they get to the tomb, they see a man sitting on the tomb dressed in a white robe and tells them that Yeshua has risen early in the morning and it also says that Yeshua rose early rose early on day one of the week which we would be Sunday that word early is pro e in the Greek meaning the, around the fourth watch of the night from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. When we go look that up. So Yeshua rose sometime in the night. Now day one of the week starts at sundown on Saturday evening when the sun goes down. <coughs> now I'm not going to get into that too much right now. Uh, that is a, that is one of the, the scriptures that a lot well that's where modern churchianity has that Sunday is the Lord's day that we are to keep and, and follow for our worship services and whatnot. and nowhere in there does that say that Yeshua changed the, the Shabbat the Sabbath it just says he rose so what all right. Now, like I said, I'm not, that's not the point of this video. I just want you to think about it. Uh, maybe go do your own research on it. So he rose early in the morning. The first concept I seen there was these ladies who loved Yeshua are going to do what they know that needs to be done when there's a death. And they're going to do what is custom of those days with the deceased body. Just like today, we have customs and whatnot in our funerals. We go to a lot of places. Uh, when someone dies the day before the funeral, they'll have a viewing of the body uh, for a certain amount of time. Uh, different customs around the country, you know, around the world and whatnot for, for deceased. But anyway, that was a custom. They were going to anoint the body of Yeshua. And they're concerned, thinking, how in the heck are we going to get this big old rock out of the way? Well, they're concerning themselves with things that Yahweh's already already taken care of. Yeshua's already done. He's already went before them and already had it taken care of. Secondly, the man in the robe, dressed in white, specifically tells them that he has risen early in the morning. Let me get going here. Early in the morning, 
and his promise was that he would come and visit all of them in Galilee to go and tell the disciples. They are given a commission, they're given a command to go and speak the gospel. Go and tell everybody, Yeshua has risen, just as he promised. And everyone they tell failed to believe them. Each one of them, it says, has unbelief in their hearts. And as you continue reading through chapter 16, it says Yeshua met with the eleven, appeared to the eleven, and it says that he rebuked them. And I went and looked up that word rebuke, and it is a harsh, taunting almost criticizing abusively or harshly. It says he, taught, he rebuked them for their unbelief of their hearts. And so, first of all, we got Mary and them wondering how they're going to do a work that doesn't matter. They're concerning themselves with things that doesn't matter. Then we got unbelief in our hearts. And Yeshua doesn't pat them on the back, say, hey, it's okay, I understand. You know, it's it's kind of rough to to get the concept that I died yesterday and now I'm I'm I've, I've rose and went to the right hand of the Father. I get it. It's it's tough for you guys. You, but you'll get it sooner or later. Just just live your life and, and, and be well. No. He strictly and harshly rebukes them. For their unbelief. Now what does Hebrews 11, 6 tell us? It is by faith. Without faith. We cannot please. Yahuwah. Our Elohim. Right? Faith. Faith in what? Faith that Yeshua is who he says he is. He is Yahweh. Robed in the flesh. Dwelling amongst us. And as he rose and went to the right hand of the Father. He said, I will be with you forever and ever. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. <laughs> At the end of Mark, it says these signs will accompany those who believe. It says you will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. Now, as I speak here, I want to make this very clear. And don't hear me wrong. I mean it. You listen to the words of Yeshua. And you pray. A while ago, I got a, a, a call while I was talking to my boss. And after I got done talking to my boss, I called, I called my brother back. He didn't answer. So I shot him a quick text and said, Hey, I seen I missed your call. I was just calling you back, brother. He sent me a text back and said, Oh, sorry, it was an accident. Didn't mean to call you. And so facetiously, I said, I sent back another text and said, Nothing is by accident, brother. Everything has a purpose. Have a blessed day. And I was being facetious to the point where yeah, he, he butt dialed me, no big deal. But everything is for a purpose. So when we lay hands on, on someone of our, one of our loved ones or, or another person, because we've been asked to pray for them, when we lay hands on them, we have the faith and the knowing and understanding that through the power of Yeshua of the, in the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit that we can lay hands on someone and they can get well and we have that faith that when we lay hands on someone we expect it to come to pass another interesting uh, another interesting thing that, that Yeshua said in Mark 16 
was go and tell everyone in the world, all nations, ethnos, about me. And this will be the sign that accompanies them. Okay? He doesn't say, see, because here we got this issue in this world, in this culture today. And it's prevalent among modern churchianity that the laying of hands on and the signs and miracles stopped when the, when the last apostle died. That those signs were only for the apostles. Well, that ain't what the scripture just said. Go and tell everyone. And this will be the sign that accompanies them. Meaning, until he comes back on his white horse with a sword, that word protruding from his mouth. King of kings and Lord of lords. We all have the authority through our faith to lay hands on someone and heal them. Now this is the part I don't want you to hear me wrong on. We lay hands on people at certain times and they don't get well. That doesn't mean that's a lack of faith. It means that everything is intended for a purpose. I had to learn this when we lost one of my dear brothers almost a little over a year ago, almost two years ago now, wow, right before COVID. A powerful man of the Lord, and I spoke about him before, that how it just, it, it crushed my, my spirit when he passed away because of the, the powerful man of Yahweh that he was and the amount of people that he was leading and teaching about Yahweh and at such a young age he was taken up to be with the Lord forever and ever it bothered me I was like we prayed for him why didn't he get well and I knew why but a lot of people want to make that claim as well if they didn't get well it's just because you lack faith or they lack faith now remember when Peter goes and, and he does some healing and even Yeshua, he tells the people, the masses, to get out of the room. He does this because of their unbelief. Because they lack faith. And you don't need that kind of influence in your life when you're trying to do a miraculous, mighty work of the Most High. Again, don't hear me wrong lay hands on someone they don't get well and they pass on to be with the Lord forever and ever doesn't mean you lack faith doesn't mean others around you were lacking faith and that was the reason Yahweh has a reason for everything but we have that authority given granted to us and promised to us by Yeshua and we can walk in that. I say all this because we're we're walking in a time of of mass chaos and fear driven culture over a disease, over a, over a virus that keeps mocking the Most High. says our Lord will not be mocked forever the wicked will perish he says that the righteous are bold as lions and the wicked flee when no man pursue it the righteous is doing what Yahweh says when he says it how he says it because he says it it's also defined in Luke 1 6 blamelessly walking in the ways of the most high. Yeshua tells us to pick up our cross, lay down our lives, and follow him. How do you pick up your cross 
and lay down your life, meaning lay down your desires and your your pleasures and your lusts to walk righteously in Him. Pick up your cross means that He went to the to the cursed stake, impaled, crucified, blameless, and spotless. If we're to pick up our cross, we're to walk righteously, blameless, and spotless. When we do sin, when we do fall, sin being a transgression of God's law, the whole law, when we do sin, we repent for it. We're baptized unto repentance. We're baptized once to repent fully as needed. David, a man after Yahweh's own heart, committed sin against Yahweh and Yahweh alone. He repented. As we read the account of David, he had to repent over and over again for being foolish, being prideful, being lustful. It's not a once and for all thing to repent one time. Pick up our cross and follow him. Lay down our lives. It means I love bacon. But Leviticus chapter 11 says it's unclean to eat pig, swine, lobster, shrimp, rabbit, catfish. I love all those things. I loved all those things at one time. Lay down my life, my pleasure. Why? Because if I don't, I'll be damned to hell. It's not the point, y'all. We're so hung up on this culture about salvation. I was saved on January 3rd, 1972. Been a Christian ever since. You were given salvation through grace and mercy. It was a gift from Yahweh, Elohim. Through your faith, not of ourselves lest we boast Ephesians 2 and 8 we were given that salvation before the foundations of the world don't again don't hear me wrong this is not the predestination doctrine of you know some are some are born unto salvation and some are born unto condemnation that's not what I'm saying saying that Proverbs 16, 9 says, a man devises his heart, but the Lord shall direct his steps. My heart prior to Yeshua was to do everything that fulfilled the, the lust of the flesh of Matt. After Yeshua, I seek to please him. If you love me, keep my commands. John 14, 15. What commands? That is word commands, not command. One singular, commands. Malachi 3, 6. I am Yahweh Sabaoth. I change not. I never change. Yeshua, our example. That we're supposed to strive to be like. Kept the commands. All of them. The only thing that changed y'all on that stake was. The curtain. Was torn. From top to bottom. And he became the bridge access. Through the Ruach. The Holy Spirit. For each of us. To be in the presence of the Lord. To speak to the Lord. Without a fleshful individual interceding for us. And by, by blood alone is the remission of sins. You have to shed blood for the remission of sins. Yeshua became that once and for all 
bloodshed moment for from the beginning to the end we're all flesh we're clued in on that in Isaiah chapter 6 when Isaiah goes before the Lord and he stands in the presence of the Lord at the throne room and sees the seraphim and says I am undone I'm a man of unclean lips. And the seraphim touches his lip with a coal from the altar, a live coal from the altar. He says, now your lips are clean. Go and tell the people. John the Baptist says, I indeed am baptized thee with water. But the one coming after me is mightier than me. And he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. So all these things tie together and clue us in on our salvation and on our walk with the Lord. There are times in our lives when Yahweh, 40, uh, Psalms 4610, be still, sit down, pray with all supplication fervently be still and know that I'm Yahweh I've got you there's times to be still for all things there's a time under the sun and a season but all seasons start and all seasons end <clears throat> Psalms 46.10 is not an end all be all be still forever chill out I got this. Go we'll put on your armor for battle and then just go kick back on the couch and play Xbox. No. We're called to be still for a season and then we get equipped up, we get built up, we get encouraged and strengthened. And sometimes we have to have an angel come kick us in the ribs and tell us to get up and go because we're hard headed and we don't want to. But then we're commissioned to go and do. Look at the commission that, that Yeshua gave to his 11. Go and teach every creature, tribe, tongue, and nation that I am Yeshua, the Messiah. And these signs shall accompany them. Jesus says, in this world, you will have tribulation, but fear not. Have peace, have joy, for I have overcome the world. He who loves the world has enmity with the Most High. He who loves the world. Do you love the world? Do you love your, your bacon more than the Lord? Do you love your traditions and celebrations of holidays more? than the Lord because when you don't want to come off of these things even though it says it in scripture you want to make excuses just because I've given you grace and forgiven you of something you've done wrong does not give you the right to go and do it again to me and that's what we are taught in Christianity today that because of his grace that he's forgiven us of our trespasses of his righteous holiness. That because he forgave us once, we're free to just do it over and over and over again. Do it however we want. To hell with what he said. To hell with what he wants. We're men. Given grace. We can do whatever we want. How shameful. Shame on you for believing that. The word says do something, do it. The word says give it up, give it up. The word says change, change. The word says repent, repent. What was the message that, that John the Baptist preached? Repent, for the kingdom is, hand, is at hand. He wasn't going around saying, hey, enjoy your life. You're free from the law now. The kingdom is at hand.
Think about the concept that you walk in and believe. First Peter 3, 7 says, if we do not treat our wives in order and correctly, that Elohim does not even hear our prayers. If we don't treat our wives right. Isaiah, or Jeremiah chapter 11, I think it is, also says that, tell the people, because of their stiff-necked, hard-headed, unrighteous, rebellious, sinful behavior, rebellious, tell them don't even cry out to me because I ain't listening to them. I don't hear their prayers. I look around at this, this culture, this, this world that we're living in right now, don't think he hears a lot of a lot of people's prayers because they're walking in unrighteousness. Oh, I know. That's probably going to frustrate and piss a lot of you off. I'm just telling you what the word says. In context, in concept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Feel me? I didn't get with the program. The enemy is working overtime right now. You can see all of the, the prophecies coming together, coming to a bottleneck head. It's coming. We're not there yet, but it's, it's moving that way fast. Psalms 91, find the secret place of the Most High. Have faith. That he is who he says he is. That if even you lose your life. Your fleshful life. You gained your eternal life with him. By the grace he gave you through your faith. That you believe in him. That you can do all things. That he's promised us. Pray for one another fervently. So that you may be healed. James 4 4. Go read it. Psalms 91. Go read it. Isaiah chapter 6. Go read it. Mark 16. Go read it. Matthew 4. Go read it. Let us walk in his righteousness and his faith. Y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated. This is a little Phil Disciple, and I will catch you guys on the next ride.